that the iron is actually going to be molten iron. The molten iron, when it reaches the paper, will burn through, and you should be able to see a column of molten iron pour from the bottom of the container, if all goes well. Okay, so I'm going to ignite my magnesium fuse, and then leave the area. So if my magnesium is lit, that reaction releases a tremendous amount of energy. That's what we call an exothermic reaction. You don't believe me. <laughs> the product. <laughs> All right, so you don't want to go up. I just don't want, oh, no, there goes the floor. <laughs> the product of that reaction is a red hot chunk of molten iron. A red hot chunk of molten iron. Now, if you're curious just how much energy is released by that reaction, how much energy is given off in that particular chemical reaction, the amount of energy released in that reaction is almost as much energy as you get by eating a Snickers bar. So think about that. If you don't burn off that energy, if you don't expend that energy through exercise, where do you think that Snickers bar is going to end up? <laughs> right there. The energy contained within foods is tremendous. And so although that looks like a lot of energy, it is less than the amount of energy that you would get in your body by metabolizing a Snickers bar. Okay, so now let's pull out our table here a little bit. We are going to go from the very, very hot to the very, very cold. Do we have a, I'm going to cover my table here because I don't want to make too much of a mess. All right. Dave. Here we go. Okay. How are we doing? Here we have some liquid cold, liquid nitrogen, minus 196 degrees Celsius. Exceptionally cold. Okay. Minus 196 degrees Celsius, colder even than Potsdam in the winter. <laughs> Put your finger in it. In it. <laughs> in it. Would I scare you wrong? Put your finger in the liquid nitrogen. <laughs> Put your finger in the liquid nitrogen. What's it feel like? What's it feel like? It boils the moment you touch it. Putting your finger into liquid nitrogen is like sticking a hot poker in water. 
and so it boils the moment you touch it. As long as you don't stay in it, you're fine for a short period of time. If I were to leave my finger in there for a long period of time, the results would be quite a bit different. What we want to do is see what happens when some things which are used to being at room temperature accidentally slip and fall into some minus 196 degrees Celsius liquid nitrogen. So let's take something like your standard carnation in liquid nitrogen, or something like your standard issue <laughs> banana at minus 196 degrees Celsius. All right, so what do you think they're going to look like at minus 196 degrees Celsius? Cold. Now, let's see. I'm going to take my, take my carnation, allow it to get cold for a second here. <laughs> You can see that the fact that it's still boiling means that the carnation has not got down to the temperature of liquid nitrogen yet. Minus 196 degrees Celsius liquid nitrogen. And, okay, we got some of the other things here. When I pull it out, what do you think my carnation is going to look like? My carnation is the same, with one notable difference. It's now frozen solid. Anything that contains water at minus 196 degrees Celsius is going to be frozen solid. So I'm going to add a little bit of nitrogen there. Suppose we had something else like a Super Bowl. <laughs> what do you think is going to happen to a Super Bowl at minus 196 degrees Celsius? <laughs> We're going to take a couple things here. We're going to see if we can get them up. Yeah. My Super Bowl in there. I got this one guy taking, they pour it in the toilet, and they do all kinds of weird things. <laughs> <laughs> they just like to see the foam and the froth and everything happening. They chase the cat around the house with it. You know, they, in the summer when they're swimming in the pool, I dump it in and they, you know, they fog and foam around the place. All right, so. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look we're going to see what happens with my, uh, my Super Bowl at minus 196 degrees Celsius. My banana is going strong in here. It'll take a second for these to get cold. Minus 196 degrees Celsius. We're going to sweat there. Okay. Uh, eeny, meeny, miny, moe, which one we want to see? Let's see my Super Bowl. What do you think is going to happen to my Super Bowl when I bounce it? You think it's going to shatter? Wrong. It still bounces. It probably bounces better than it did. Only now it's a different kind of bounce. Now it bounces like a marble. At minus 196 degrees Celsius, my Super Ball is a Super Super Ball. Now wait a minute. I killed it. <laughs> <laughs> it won't bounce. So after freezing in liquid nitrogen, my Super Ball here will not bounce. All right, I'm going to just drop that in there for a second. Uh, if I take my banana, what do you think my banana looks like after freezing in minus 196 degrees Celsius? It looks fine. It looks like a banana except for one major difference. <laughs> it is frozen like a rock. Now, if you would like, if you would like, you can actually pass around the banana and take a look at it as it goes around the room. You can pass around the banana in some pieces here. This one here needs to break a little more. There we go. <laughs> if we want to pass this around, the name of this game, however, is don't be the owner of the banana when it warms up. <laughs> because when it warms up, it will be the biggest piece of banana goo you have ever seen. It will be just like banana baby food. Now, several years ago, a student of mine asked, can you 